right? I got a couple different cameras. Got a couple different cameras running. This car is going by. So I'm going to try to pick my spots in which I talk. And I'm going to try my best to adequately uh, give my attention to each set of the cameras that's, uh, that's rolling right now. Give me one second. All right, I just wrote this a little bit, bit ago today, so excuse me if I stumble across any words or excuse me if I mispronounce any words. <clears throat> I know and understand that with the, unprecedented time, with the unprecedented times that we are currently living in, it may be rather difficult to keep up with every police and protest related news story. I understand that with the global pandemic that greatly affected the Winnebago County area in a devastating way, and with the record number of murders taking place that keeping up with something as regular as police brutality and something as niche as protesting may not have been a top priority for everyone throughout 2020 and the beginning of 2021. 250 days ago, the May 250 days ago on May 30th, the Rockford Police Department, in concert with the Winnebago County Sheriff's Department, assaulted over 100 and falsely arrested at least 10 people outside the District 1 police station. They punched kicked, pepper sprayed, and tased people of all races, religions, genders, and ages. No officers were held accountable or publicly admonished or disciplined. A farce investigation by the same police department, a farce investigation by the same police department which did the crime was conducted. Every action taken that day was found justifiable, just as every incident of a police shooting or an in-custody death for the last 30 plus years has been found justifiable. It was a reminder that in Rockford and in Winnebago County, if you wear a badge and a blue uniform, you are above the very law that you were sworn to uphold and protect. Rockford police officers can beat, tase, sexually assault, falsely arrest, and murder citizens at whim and suffer, and suffer zero consequences. Once our hopes of justice were discarded by the police force, we hope that dramatizing the issue to the city to the city officials and to the city government through demonstrations at city market will bring attention to the victimization and traumatizations of the people on May 30th in hopes that the mayor, aldermen, and other city officials and other people within the city government will seek alternate ways to give justice to the victims of May 30th. Again, our hopes were discarded when instead of the city officials and the city of government using the platform which we had to try to bring attention and awareness and to try to get some kind of change for the people and get some kind of justice for those people on May 30th. Instead of doing those things, they deployed the same police force that beat and assaulted people on May 30th. They say that the definition of insanity is expecting different results from the same actions. So either city officials and the city of Rockford government and the mayor are insane or they comprehended fully that sending these same officers who have been ruled justified in assaulting people and falsely, ar falsely arresting people on May 30th will result in more assaults and, falsely, and false arrest at City Market. I believe they knew and understood completely what they were doing and that they wanted those officers to use force to instill fear and repress the collective voice of the community. City Market became a weekly May 30th. After 33 people were arrested, some multiple times, and countless people being assaulted at City Market, and it's pro the protest ended on September 25, 2020. In the final two months of City Market, children, teenagers, and adults, all unarmed and nonviolently protesting, were pepper sprayed, tackled, had their heads sat on, had bags put on their heads, were elbowed, and were falsely arrested by the Rockford Police Department and the Winnebago County Sheriff's Department, just like on May 30th. And just like on May 30th, no one was held accountable. The next Friday, October 2nd, Tyrus Jones, an unarmed black man, was shot in the back. In some communities, this would have been the, the fuse that ignited a powder keg. But here in Rockford, in 2020, it was not. For multiple reasons, but I will list the three major ones that I believe right now. In no particular order and with no particular uh, specific importance of which one should be above the other, I think that the first reason that Tyrus, uh, that, for, I believe that the first reason that the shooting of Tyrus Jones did not ignite a community powder keg was that Tyrus Jones was arrested and charged with the murder. The man he was charged with murdering was a deeply loved young man in the community of Rockford. He was a father, 
a son, a nephew, a brother, and much more than I have time to speak on in this small speech. Excuse me, one second. My fault. <clears throat> Out of respect for his family, who I've spoken to, I will refrain from saying his name as those were, as those were their wishes. Nonetheless, out of respect for his family who I've spoken to, I will refrain from saying his name. Nonetheless, it is clear to see how these issues have fractured not only the community, but also the movement. It is also complicated. It, it, is, also, it is a complicated issue that all too often plagues our community as black people in the United States. A constant battle of inner city community violence being interwoven with police violence. Today, we unfortunately do not have the time to dissect in this proper manner this issue but I continue to keep both families in my mind and in my heart. I have struggled deeply over this issue over the past months regarding the shooting of Tyrus Jones by Dominic McNeese of the Rockford Police Department. And the final analysis that I have gathered is that in a city that had 36 murders last year, we can ill afford for murder suspects to be brought in dead or alive. In a city that has deprived resources like education, education, housing, and employment from members of its community and from areas in its community, forcing and enticing them to turn to crime, we can ill afford to bring in any criminal suspects, dead or alive. Secondly, I believe the reason that this did not ignite a community powder keg. Secondly, the reason I believe this did not ignite a community powder keg is because there was no dash camera video footage put out. I believe the suppression of the dash camera video footage is another reason that it has not been outraged. Unfortunately, unfortunately, in 2020 and in 2021, some things still must be seen to be believed. Third and lastly, in the United States, when you have a criminal record, people generally do not care or want to know what happens to you, whether it is just or unjust, whether it is legal or illegal. In America, Excuse me. In America, some may say, once you are in the system, you can no longer become a victim. Thus, these three factors have kept the attempted 21st century lynching of Tyrus Jones by Officer Dominic Menice of the Rockford Police Department from becoming a national and international issue. These things have limited the empathy and urgency of the situation. In an attempt to garner that empathy and urgency, protests has begun and have continued in occupation outside of City Hall for 125 consecutive days. Community members who may have felt indifferent about the shooting of an unarmed black man have been beyond empathetic about protesters not having proper living conditions, about protesters may, might not having food or drink or any other items that will, or any other items that will maintain their living. People who may not have People who may not have felt the need to ask more questions about Tyrus Jones being shot, to get more information about officers shooting people in Rockford, in Rockford, have been more than attentive when they come out and speak to the protesters outside of City Hall. Excuse me. <clears throat> this protest has not been without its struggles. The Rockford Police Department, even outside of City Hall, have been weaponized by the mayor and by city officials and have assaulted and falsely arrested protesters since the beginning of this occupation. Racists have made death threats and drove by and walked by city halls spewing hateful slurs and epithets. City officials have violated our right to assemble at every turn and given half truths to the media and the public about it through social media. But with each of these things, the protest is successful because it dramatizes the issue and it builds tension, forcing people who have been in the silent majority to raise their voice and pick a side on these issues. It also was noteworthy to mention before closing that the shooting of Tyrus Jones was ruled justified, just as every other shooting has been ruled in the city of Rockford and in Winnebago County. The officer who did the shooting, Dominic McNeese, collected paychecks while he was off, and then he was sent back into the streets. And less than two months after being ruled justified in the shooting and being sent back into the streets, he assaulted Denzel Duvon. He was, he was a part of an assault that took place on Denzel Duvon in the beginning of January. There have been pictures online and pictures all through Rockford circulated of the vicious and merciless uh, beating that uh, Denzel took. I also would like to add that at the beginning of this occupation, the city of Rockford, the mayor and Rockford officials and the police department all beckoned, and, uh, beckoned protesters to go to the designated protest zone. 
all of the, they set up a protest zone just as they had done in city market and they told people that leaving from that protest zone would result in their arrest within that protest zone the canopy was put up to shield people from the elements and to make sure that people could have uh, as close of, uh, as close as a maintainable living space as possible on the 100th day of the occupation on january 11th the city officials and the Rockford police department destroyed the canopy and also confiscated, illegally confiscated the canopy and left protesters to deal with the elements without any kind of structure or shelter. Since that, day, since that day, there has been multiple snow emergencies and now we face a winter vortex. Just as police would not deter us, just as false arrests would not deter us, yeah. and just as assaults would not deter us, the weather will not deter us from continuing this occupation. We will go, we now will go behind City Hall and re-erect the canopy that we had to make sure that protesters can survive and live through February without any kind of, without any kind of harm coming to them. Uh, again, I want to close the speech on this. I wish the speech could have been more polished. Wish I could have delved more specifically on certain things, but because of uh, the uh, limit for time, you know, I couldn't do that. I would encourage everybody watching this to please go back and share this speech. I put a, a written version up of this speech online. Uh, go back and listen to this specifically and pay as much attention to all of these things as possible. Go back and Google May 30th and Google the events that have happened leading up to this. Go to the May 30th Alliance Facebook page and watch the things that have happened leading up to this thing. Uh, there is, it is a struggle that we have to wage to end mass incarceration, police terrorism, and racial injustice in this country. It has to be some city that is going to be at the forefront of not doing something just when it's nice outside, not doing something just when somebody has been shot and murdered and it becomes a national story. But each and every incident of police misconduct, police brutality, inmate misconduct, or jail uh, misconduct or jail brutality being put onto our citizens, we have to fight and struggle for each one of those people. It doesn't matter whether it's on CNN, doesn't matter whether it's on Fox, it doesn't matter if the news is going to cover it, it doesn't matter if it's a picture or a story that's going to go viral. We have to treat each one of these incidents and every incident like it's George Floyd. Uh, Denzel Dubont has to be treated like George Floyd. Tyrus Jones has to be treated like yeah. George Floyd. Uh, uh, Eddie Patterson has to be treated like George Floyd. Michael Sago has to be treated like George Floyd. Kerry Blake has to be treated like George yeah. Floyd. Joe Biden has a court day coming up. Joe Biden has to be treated like George Floyd, or we will continue to go on this cycle where we get upset when it's nice outside, and then we have to be reminded over and over again when the fall and the winter comes that we still have not brought any power to ourselves as a community. We will not get any power until these people know that we will not compromise and we will not relent. I have a nine-year-old son. I refuse for my nine-year-old son in 10 years to be doing the same things that I'm doing yeah. and to be giving the same speeches that I'm giving. Mm -hmm. And I know that the only way that I can make sure that that happens is through struggling. I know that the only way that I may have to be able to make sure that that happens is through arrest, is through assaults. And it is people that up to this point, the only reason that I can speak freely as a black man is because black men were willing to die for me to do that. It's because black women were willing to die for me to do that. It's because black members of the LGBTQ community were willing to die for me to do that. And if the only way that I can make sure that these things change and that we can get to the fulfillment of what the promise of this nation is supposed to be is for me to put myself in those same situations, I will continue to do that. The occupation continues.